Hi! So today I will be reviewing another book for you. I'm so excited about this review, you guys, because I truly wanted to read this book for so, so long. And I actually started reading it at the beginning of last year. Um, and I got about 100 pages in and I just didn't keep going with it. And I just don't really know what I was thinking. But, um, but I did finally finish it and I'm so glad I did. And the book is Jellicoe Road by Melina Marchetta. This book is beautiful. Melina Marchetta is an Australian author. I've read another book of hers, um, Saving Francesca, and I read that when I was in high school, and holy moly, that book was just beautifully written. And I feel like people need to be reading Melina Marchetta's books. This book, I think, came out, um, like about six years ago or something like that, so maybe like 2010, maybe 2009. Written the perspective of the main character, who is called Taylor Markham, and it's got this dual story going on where it talks about Taylor's story and also this other group of young people's story. So Taylor lives on this, she lives on this area which is all of her school's kind of bush and all that area and so there's like a boarding school and a cadet school and all these different schools going on and different people live in different areas and what they do is they have territory wars so there are like leaders for each group of people and each group has their own like territories and it's like there's consequences if you cross over into someone else's and they will bargain for better territories and things like that and there's significant places and things so it's really really quite a cool story from a young person's perspective of being at a boarding school and it made me really want to be at a boarding school. So what happens is basically Taylor was kind of abandoned and left at a 7-Eleven store when she was like 14 and her mum was a bit of a hot mess and we don't really figure out a bit more about the mum until the story starts to unfold a little bit more which is really cool and she's picked up by this lady called Hannah and Hannah basically looks after her and raises her but, but it also keeps her really at arm's length um, so they have a bit of a weird kind of relationship and then Hannah goes missing and Taylor's trying to figure out kind of what went down and also there's the territory wars going on with the different leaders and there's also what is mixed in to the story is a manuscript that Hannah left behind with these characters in it and that they it starts to unfold that they were actually real people and that they were the ones who started the territory wars so this book was just so beautifully written like it was like it was like lyrical and the way that Taylor would describe things and and it just so accurately met exactly how it feels to be a young person and I say that about a bunch of books like it like they kind of spoke how accurately it was to be a young person but this just really nailed it and but in a way that it's kind of like she could explain what it felt like in a way that young people can't quite put into words like it was beautiful to read kind of confusion and all of this stuff but really in the way where it's not just like saying I was so confused but it's written in a way that like that tells a story and it shows you rather than telling you which is like the magic of reading so the great mystery of Hannah going missing and all of that stuff was really frustrating at the beginning because you feel like you don't really know Hannah and so you don't have a huge attachment to her like Taylor does and so you're kind of like well who really cares that Hannah is gone but it becomes more and more like a real thing as the as the story does progress. There is a bit of a, a romance between Taylor and Jonah Griggs, who is the leader of the cadets, one of the is in the school. And it's it's kind of like I really liked that Taylor wasn't like fawning and pining after Jonah all the time. Like he would kind of show up and they would kind of have a little bit of a complex relationship and stuff like that. And I feel like a lot of the time the way relationships for young people are portrayed is kind of like a little bit pathetic in a way that it's like, oh, he's just so beautiful or she's so beautiful and why can't we be together and oh my gosh, why doesn't he like me and oh, he likes me. Like it's kind of a bit typical and predictable, but their relationship was a bit more complex. It definitely wasn't adult, but it was really, really like it had all these little complexities and 
things that were kind of accurate about like about what it's like to have a relationship as a young person but to not be like the rest of your peers in terms of that you can tell that Taylor is quite um, mature for her age and that she's kind of being forced to be mature for her age and I really you really learn a bit more about that as the story kind of goes on and stuff as you start to unravel what really happened for her between her and her mother and what her mother was really like so Taylor's oh my goodness look at the light oh maybe I should move the it's better isn't it it might change again who knows it's it's natural lighting what are you gonna do really broke my heart particularly um more towards the end of the story is when Taylor and Jonah went on their little road trip and they had to kind of figure out they were trying to look um I think they were trying to look for Hannah but they were also trying to look for Taylor's mother because they thought maybe they would actually be together and it did work out that way that they were together. They find this kid and Taylor knew, knew him when they were younger and basically what happened was Taylor got dumped at 7-Eleven and now lives at a boarding school and kind of has a bit more of a safe and secure life but what happened to this other kid is that he ended up basically getting left behind by his mother in the King's Cross in Australia and which is like kind of kind of a bit of a rough area. You can see that this could have been Taylor's life but it really wasn't and that this kid was left alone and it's you find out he was left alone with a pedophile and he had to kind of figure all that out and you can tell he's on drugs and all of that stuff and it's just like Oh my goodness, it's like you're realising with Taylor that this could have been her as well. Or that kind of tension between like when a parent like leaves a child, are they doing the right thing by the child or aren't they? And it's almost like we realise that in this case, specifically, that Taylor's mum leaving her with Hannah was actually the best thing for Taylor because her mum was still addicted to drugs and living a kind of lifestyle that was pretty rough yeah all in all I really love this book I I feel like it took me a while to really kind of actually get into it and there were parts of it that I didn't really understand because it was written so beautifully like I was so taken by the words and the way it was written and everything that I kind of would get lost in it and lose a bit of the Oh, but wait, what's really going on? Hang on, I lost a bit of myself, so I had to go back and reread and stuff like that. But but I would I would definitely read this book again. It was a joy to read. I would recommend it. It was I would recommend it more to to like older young adults. Like I'd say like people in their twenties and stuff like that would get a lot more out of this book than young people would. I feel like if I read this as a young person I wouldn't have a huge appreciation for the, the story and the way it's told. But as an adult, I have a really great appreciation for it. Gave Jellicoe Road a 4 out of 5 star Goodreads rating. And if you want to see my Goodreads rating itself, um, uh, my Goodreads account is just the cat gooding. It will be linked down below. And I really feel like there was something kind of haunting and beautiful about this book. And I feel like I wrote in my review that I feel like I'm going to be thinking about this story for a really long time and it will kind of stick with me. And I think that's the way I felt about Saving Francesca as well, that it was kind of one of those stories where you kind of I just kind of pondering it for a while and still taking in what you read and it kind of changes something in you. And I feel like this did that for me and I just... I really liked it because of that I think. Um, the reason I didn't give it a five star rating was because I wasn't like in love, in love with the book. Like I didn't, um, I didn't find myself like geeking out about it and stuff like that like I have with other books and it just doesn't compare to the five star ratings that I've got and stuff like that that are on my good reads and things like that. So I did really enjoy it, I would recommend this book. It was a great way to start the month of March. Yeah and I will see you guys in my next video.